Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this morning, you know, I, we want to talk about patience. And, you know, you have to understand when you're, be, when you're waiting for something, when you're um, waiting, God is at work. And he's working it out. And you have to believe that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> It says, therefore, since we also are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You know, God wants us to run this race every day. He wants us to have patience. He wants us to know that we're not in this race by ourselves. In Jesus' name, you're not alone. All you have to do, hallelujah, is just let God know every day that you're, you're praying, you're seeking him. And he's going to say, well, Pastor, I run out of prayers to say. And you know, this morning as I was seeking the Lord, the Lord, you know, the Lord brought back to my remembrance. Well, when you don't know how to pray, just say the Lord's prayer. Just repeat the Lord's prayer back to him. So, you know, when you're, but when you're running this race, you know, you don't, you don't want to be passive. You don't, um, you don't want people to, to cheat. But the word patience is translated as to mean endurance. And we have to endure some things. A Christian race, um, we run this race patiently by persevering through difficulty. In the Bible, patience is persevering toward a goal enduring trials and expectantly waiting for a promise to be to be fulfilled i know a lot of us are waiting on some things a lot of us have some things that we say well you know i've really been patient lord and i'm really waiting on you well you know what if it have not came to pass yet you know what keep believing god keep trusting him keep having faith in him keep knowing praise god there are some things that, hallelujah, that, that I deal with on a personal basis. But you know what? I'm, I try to be patient through it all. And I try, hallelujah, to, to know that God is working it out. And that's what he wants you to understand. That whenever, when everything is going our way, patience is easy to demonstrate. The true test of patience comes when our rights are violated. You know, you know how you feel when a car cuts you off and in traffic, you know, you can get upset and don't have patience. You know, you get upset when, when you're treated unfairly. You just want to, you don't want to have patience, but you want to just tell somebody off and, and, and or you, you know, you don't have patience with what's going on at work. But some people think they have a right to get upset. And I'm here to tell you, we don't have that right. Praise God. You know, the Bible says, get angry and sin not. But this is the thing. We have to take everything to God in prayer and let God work it out. We don't always know how things are going to come about. We don't know how God is going to bring everything to pass. But we do know this, that God has promised us in his word that everything is working out for our good. And if we trust and believe that, hallelujah, and, and have patience. Um, we don't have to get upset. You know, I have gotten upset sometimes about things. I have to go back and pray. I have to ask God, God, forgive me, you know, because I know that you, you can't have patience in one area and then don't have patience for something else. And then, but see, God said he wants us to have a balance. A false balance is an abomination to God. So this morning, hallelujah, I believe that God is working some things out in your life, but he wants you to have just a little bit more patience. You know, uh, the Bible, have, have a, it praises patience as a fruit of the Spirit. We know what Galatians 5 and 22 says. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, and goodness, and faithfulness. So when we know, praise God, that, that we have to walk, walk in love, we have to, hallelujah, have peace in our lives, no matter when things seem to go awry, when things seem like they're not going our way. I remember, praise God, last week, 
um, some things kept happening, just looked like it was not going to work out. But we continually, hallelujah, to have faith, to trust in God, not to get impatient, not to run ahead, not to slow down, but you know what? But to keep trusting and having faith in God. You got to pace yourself. You take everything one step at a time and you pray, praise God. I, I, I like the one in uh, Romans chapter 12 and 12 that's on the screen. It says rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. You have to be constant. And I say again, if you don't know what to pray and you don't pray and pray and pray, then what do you do? How do you, you can pray the Lord's prayer. Because you know what? When you pray the Lord, Lord's prayer, that prayer opens up everything in heaven and all the scriptures and all, hallelujah, what God has for you. Hallelujah, it opens up each verse. Hallelujah, each statement in the Lord's prayer. It does something. So you be constant in prayer and you be patient and you wait up on the Lord because he's working something out for your good. You know, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse, verse 14, it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. God commands us to be patient with people. He commands you to be patient with your children, be patient with your spouses, be patient in the workplace, in your business. You know, you don't want to be impatient because it might cause uh, uh, action brings about a reaction. And you don't want to give the enemy, that old devil, praise God, room to come in. But you got to have patience. You have to have patience when you're traveling. You have to have patience in everything that you do. Pastor and I, we, we, when we went and hallelujah, had to attend the memorial service and the storm came and and people were hanging out in the airport, praise God. And some people were impatient. It was just a lot of things going on. But you know what? We, we understood. We said, we're going to stay in peace. And then we're going to get where we need to go. And we're going to get there on time. And we're going to get to our destination. And God, then that happened. We arrived on time, in time, and was where we were supposed to be. But when you get impatient, praise God, all kind of things can happen. You know, praise God, let me stay on track this morning because I really want you, hallelujah, to know that patience is your portion today. Patience is going to what is going to help you get your breakthrough. Patience, praise God, is a is a key, praise God, that's going to get you closer and closer, hallelujah, to your healing, to your breakthrough, to your finances, to everything that you're waiting on God for. Patience reveals our faith in God's timing because we know his omnipotence and his love is with us. So that's what patience, you got to have faith in God's timing, not in your timing. We all say, well, we get tired, praise God. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to keep going through the same thing. But you know what? I promise you, if you just have patience and trust God, begin to pray, hallelujah, begin to seek God. I want to talk about Job just a little bit because everybody always says about, you know, Job, Job had patience. But you know, Abraham had patience, praise God. Abraham and Sarah, because God told them that they were going to have a child and they had to wait for it, praise God. Uh, Paul had to have, have patience. Uh, with all the trials and the tribulations that he went through. Let me tell you, as believers, hallelujah, as part of the kingdom of God, we got to have patience. We got to have that faith in God's timing and not our own timing. Right now, I'm believing God for something, praise God. And I, I know I see one date on, on the paper, but I'm believing God, hallelujah, that it's going to happen at another time. But and, and, and that date is, I know that's what man said. I know what I said, but then I want to know what does God say. I want to know what is God's time in, in the matter. And see, when you put God in, in everything and then you have patience, 
to let him work it out. I promise you, you'll win every time. We know the story of Job is a testament to the noble per perseverance in the face of tests and trials. This story can seem unfair, confusing at times, but yet uh, the Lord makes no mistake and he uses all things for our good as well as for his. Praise God. God knows how to put every piece of the puzzle together. Hallelujah. See, the patience of Job and his mindset is remarkable. You know, when you begin to have patience and patience is truly operating in your life, you will begin to see things happen differently in your life. When you have patience, praise God. And I'm going to even add, when you have patience, you've got to have peace. Praise God. When that, you have patience and you have peace, praise God, then you, you, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and to work things out for you in the name of Jesus. See the, uh, so Job, had, he, he kept his mindset right no matter what anybody said to him. In Job one, chapter 1, verse 1, it said, Job feared uh, God and he shunned evil. You know, sometimes we have to shun things you know, uh, that's, that's not of God. We have to keep ourselves, hallelujah, where we fear and we reverence our God because we love him. As the story continues, we witness Job, those many blessings followed by God allowing death in his life. He, had, he, his, he lost his children uh, and destruction to enter to his life. He, he, he got sick. But you know, but why you said, well, why would God allow all these things to happen? But it was to continually to purify and, and it's to cleanse our heart. Because you know what? Sometimes we don't even know our own heart. We don't even know, praise God, that we might have let pride or jealous or jealousy or, or, or being stubborn or, you know, or allow something in our heart that's, that, that might be laying dormant in there. But that's why we have to have to allow God to test us and try us to make sure there's not anything laying dormant in our life. Praise God that we want God to come into our heart. Hallelujah, because we're believing God. You're believing God for your family. You're believing God for things in your life. And God wants you to have that patience to know and to trust him that it is going to come to pass. Praise God. So, you know, he, he just wants you to know Hallelujah, that if you just keep the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, keep me, help me to walk this thing out. Hallelujah, the way that I will be pleasing to God. You know, during uh, Job's first test, he lost all his possessions. While Job was uh, grief-stricken, uh, what did he do? He praised the Lord. In, uh, is this our response? So when, when we lose everything, is is when when death comes, you know, yeah, we're grief stricken and we're sad. But you know what? We should also know that when people go on there with the Lord, when we lose everything, just like God gave you the first possessions, He can give you those things back. In Job chapter one and verse twenty one, it says, "The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord." Praise God. Bless God's name. See, in Job's story, many, many told him that he must have done something wrong. And you know, in your heart, when trials and tribulation come, sometimes you, we get like, what are people going to think? What are they going to say? You know, I don't, I don't want to face this dilemma, you know, but then you have to begin to praise God. You have to know within yourself that you live in righteous, you live in holy, you live in all that you know to live. You know, um, even Job, his wife told him to let go of his integrity and curse God. But Job persevered, knowing that he didn't understand it all, but trusted that God was still who he claimed to be. He never got angry with God. If in Job chapter 2, verse 10, this was his reply to his wife. He replied, you're talking like a foolish woman. Can we accept good from God and not trouble? God is God. God can allow anything in your life. But you have to know that God is in that thing with you. You know, I always say to my husband, I can go through anything as long as I know that God is with me. 
as long as I know, just like the three Hebrew boys when they was in that fire, Jesus was in that fire with them. As long as you know Jesus is in that thing with you, you can go through anything. It's easy to praise the Lord when we are blessed. However, doing uh, tests and trials, God also want to see you prosper in the spirit and rely on him. He want to see you grow in the spirit. He want to see you mature. You know, I love it when I see some of you who have matured in the spirit, who are doing your prayer watches, who are, who are just growing more and more in the things of God. I tell you, when I hear the elders give the word and it's so seasoned, and it's just uh, so much in it. And when people can come back and say, Pastor, I was so blessed by the word. When I, when I hear you all just praying and standing on the word, see, this is what it's like to grow in the spirit. This is what this ministry is about. It's not, we're not, Pastor is not trying to lift up Pastor William. He wants you to be lifted up in the spirit. He wants you to grow in the spirit. He wants you to be able to speak a blessing. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. But Job's uh, life is a prime, prime illustration of how we can bow during tests and trials. We can be assured that they come, but God's word says to count them as blessings. This goes against our carnal mind. It goes against human nature, but we know, praise God, that we serve a supernatural God. And we don't always... Uh, think things are logical or coincidences. We know that God can intervene at any time that he wants to. He can bring anything to pass, hallelujah, in your life at any time that he wants to. But this, you know, if you just have to know that the Holy Spirit has equipped you. The Holy Spirit is with you in all of this in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, it says, my brethren, Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endured. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord and that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. See, you have had a breakthrough and then you have a trial. And now you say, what do you do? Well, what you do, you don't get in the flesh. And for those of you who, uh, who have read the story of Job, you know that his, his ladder was greater, praise God, that God blessed him and restored unto him. And, but this is one thing, don't allow the enemy to come in, praise God, when you start going through a, a trial. Don't play the blame game. See, this is a side uh, plot of the enemy. The enemy wants you to blame others. Uh, even blame God for your current state of misfortune and trial. He'll have you sitting up saying, why, why, why? And, and, and then, you know, you want to find somebody to blame. It's only natural to be hurt or angry in the wake of destruction. But allowing yourself to focus more on passing blame only serves to harm your faith. So you have to also watch your thoughts. What in your words, praise God. I found myself, praise God, this week, I, as things happen sometimes, you know, you get in a flow of work, but you have to watch even what you're thinking to yourself. Don't let the tricks of the enemy invade your thoughts because just because somebody says something, you have to remember you are a believer. You have God on your side. And even when they say it, they got to stand in the word. We dead in the water, praise God. And, and, you know, you have to bring yourself back. No, God can resurrect that thing. God can put life back into it. He can, he can bring that case back in the name of Jesus. So don't let the enemy invade your thought life. Ask yourself, are these thoughts from the Lord? Praise God. Do they sound uh, like his voice? Would God speak this way to, uh, to someone he loves? Uh, do not come in agreement with negative thoughts and patterns. Do not speak those curses outwardly over your life. Praise God. See, this morning, I want you to have, have this patience because patience, praise God, is a part of your breakthrough. It's a part of your victory. It's, it's a part, hallelujah, of what God wants you blessed. Praise God. So when you have patience, praise God. And also, I want you to pray for restoration, not only physical, 
and relational and financial restoration, but spiritual um, restoration. During some trials, uh, solutions may seem impossible, but we know what Matthew uh, chapter 19, verse 26 says. It says, but with God, all things are possible. There is nothing impossible for God. That's the reason I tell you when trials and tribulation come, you should sit back and relax, praise God, and pray and, and, and rejoice in hope, knowing, praise God, that God cannot fail and that nothing is too hard for God. Oh my God, I feel like preaching this morning, praise God, but I must stay calm this morning. But it, nothing is too hard for him. Nothing is impossible. If the trial involves others, which most times they do, pray for them. Uh, they could be uh, deeply wounded, wounded, both spiritually and emotionally as well. Pray that God is able to work in their hearts just as he does in yours. Praise God. You know, as Oh, God, help me just stay on track. As things are happening, as things are going on, praise God, you have to be able to, to, to have faith and trust God that it's all going to work out in God's timing. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, But we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in hell in heavenly places. And listen, this is the thing. Hallelujah. We know that we are flesh and blood. Praise God. We know we serve a supernatural God. He has given us his word. Praise God. He has not left us defenseless. Uh, we have tools. We have we 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 have the word of God. We we have uh we can pray his word back to him. And this counteracts every every device of the enemy when he comes, praise God. So he has given you, praise God, he, he's given you so much to work for. He's given you the Holy Spirit, your help, praise God. You have a helper, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus went away, he said, I would not leave you comfortless, but he said he was sending the Holy Spirit to us. So God is always with you. So there is no need to get impatient. It's no need to get overwhelmed. There's no need to go into a pity party, praise God. But what you have to do is trust, continually trust God, continually stand on his word, praise God. Reflect on the scripture in times of such testing and trials. The word of God brings comfort. Keep finding something in the word of God that you said, mm, that's it, praise God. You know, I, I, I love the scripture, praise God. But when you say, you know, I this is terrible, but it's to say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, when you've been through some things with God, when you had those encounters and those experiences, and you've seen God work it out, praise God, then you, you can sit back and have patience in this thing. And so God, the word of God brings comfort. It is pure and unchanging. Allow God's words to penetrate your heart and your will and your mind and your emotions. When your own words fail you in prayer, let uh, God do the job instead. That's why I say when you don't have the words to pray, pray the Lord's prayer. Praise God. When you don't know what to say, listen to worship music. Listen to praise music. Whatever that's encouraging to your spirit. Patience produces growth. Trials enable us to grow in our character as well as posture us to experience the comfort of God. This is how we discover his nature more deeply through becoming aware of our constant need for him. Oh my God, I can, can I tell you this morning, you know, God really spoke to me and he told me, he said, I, he told me, he said, and I don't, I'm not talking to anybody else, but he spoke to me, he said, I, I, I need you to have patience in every area of your life. If, 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 and if we are going to see the breakthroughs, I know this because he has no respect to persons. We don't have to operate in patience, praise God. And while we are operating in patience, praise God, we need to be rejoicing. And we need to be uh, uh, patient in the thing and in prayer and in the word. Hallelujah. God is trying to speak to somebody. Because I feel the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord, is in this place. And I know, I always tell you, the Holy Spirit does not show up to make you feel warm and fuzzy. 
The Holy Spirit shows up to do a work. The Holy Spirit shows up uh, to perform signs and miracles and wonders in your life. You know, it says in Psalms 34 and 18 that God is near to those who are brokenhearted. Yeah, sometimes we might get, you know, our heart get bruised and, and we feel down, but God, he strengthens us uh, with, with the patience. Hallelujah. He just like he strengthened Job, he will strengthen you. He'll strengthen your heart when we become aware of his care. Hallelujah for us in our season of trial. Second Corinthians Praise God, chapter one, three through five said, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercy and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. Now he just said, it's that God comforts us in all our tribulation. So no matter what you're going through, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to get impatient. He's going to comfort you. It goes on to say that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by, by God. But as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our constellation also abounds through Christ. You know, we got to know, and you have to know that you're not in this thing by yourself. God loves you. He cares about you. He cares about what you care about. And God is not going to allow you to fail. That's why he's given you all these tools. That's why he's given you his word, the Holy Spirit. He's given you to pray. Praise God. Let the Holy Spirit, the comforter, hallelujah, help you. And that's, let me give you that scripture. It's in John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring uh, to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Praise God. We got to draw near to, uh, to God during this time of testing. Uh, he does not, God doesn't delight in your pain. He doesn't delight in seeing you unhappy. But, you know, the Holy Spirit is here uh, to minister to you. So you have to Learn how to trust God and let and and let that pain become praise and 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 let your 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 sadness begin to worship God. I promise you, if you start to worship God and you start to praise Him and pray, you'll find yourself that you get your mind off of that situation that you that you're being impatient about, and all of a sudden, praise God. Then God will begin to give you just little nuggets here and there about it's going to work out. He'll show you maybe in part one thing. Somebody might speak a word to you. Somebody might tell, tell you, God, God told me to tell you it's going to be okay. However the Lord bring that comfort to you, just know that God is with you and he wants you to have patience. And no matter however it works out, it's going to work out for your good. Praise God. So no matter uh what he's bringing you through. Trust him to bring good from what the enemy intended for evil. Uh, I love the scripture in Genesis uh, chapter 50, verse 20. It says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it, bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. You know, when you're going through something or when you're having patience, other people are watching you. You don't know who your life is being blessed by. You know, as Pastor and I, when we uh, uh, attended the service, praise God, people were telling him, were coming up to us and telling us, oh, I remember when you all was here in ministry, uh, when, uh, when, you, when you did this and, and how, you know, we saw you in the community and how you were doing different things. Praise God. You don't know who's watching your life. You don't know who you're being, who you're affecting, praise God, in a positive way. So this is why you have to go through, praise God, with, with God's help. You have to go through rejoicing in God. Instead of speaking his word, not your own word, not how you feel, not your emotions, but speak the word of God because God knows. Um, in Job chapter 23, verse 10, let me run on. It says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. You know, God, he's going he's gonna to make sure that you come through. 
if you look at the life of Abraham, God blessed Abraham with that son. When he, he blessed Job, hallelujah, with more children, more cows, with more than he'd ever had. See, tests and trials are sure to come in your life. You know, sometimes I, I have to remind myself that God would not put on you more than you can bear. If you're going through something, you have to tell yourself, I can bear it because God is with me. I can go for it, praise God, because God allowed it, praise the Lord. And even, hallelujah, some things, even that the enemy brought, you have to know, hallelujah, God is fighting. He will send angels to fight for me. We know what happened when uh, Gabriel was fighting, and hallelujah, had to send for Michael, the archangel, to come because the prince of Persia held him up. God will send angels to fight battles for you. Praise God. We have so much in Christ Jesus. See, as the son said, I know too much about him to doubt him. Praise God. So this morning, I want, I want to pray that you have the patience, hallelujah, to wait on your breakthrough, patience to wait on your blessing. Praise God. But as I said, tests and trials that are sure to come, but God's promises have stood the test of time. Allow God's spirit to clean any uh, impurities in your heart during these times. Then consider them blessings and wait upon the Lord to restore all, all that was stolen. The next time you're in a, a traffic jam, a betrayed by a friend, or a mock for your testimony, or how you respond, see that natural uh, response is impatience, which leads to stress, anger, frustration. But Praise God that as Christians, we're no longer in bondage to a natural response. You got to watch. That's why the Bible says you got to be slow to anger, slow to speak. You got to wait sometimes before you just open up your mouth and start talking. Hallelujah, because you want to be careful what comes out of your mouth when you're waiting patiently on your blessing. You don't want to mess it up. You don't want to allow the enemy to come in. Praise God, as in Ephesians, when we're talking about the, the, the spirit of wickedness has been loose. They're going to work through somebody. They're going to work through people. Praise God. So you have to know, praise God, that you're, 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 you, well, you have to watch your response. But the word tells us that um, we're a new creature, creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See, every day, praise God. Every day that you pray, every day that you seek him, hallelujah, oh, we become a, a new creation in Christ himself. Uh, it said we have the Lord's strength to respond with patience and in complete trust in the Father's power and purpose. To those, by, to those who by persistence is doing good, seek glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to conclude, praise God. But I just wanted to tell you this morning that God wants you to have patience. Praise God, because you're on the break of your, uh, uh, you're right there at your breakthrough. You're right there, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm praising God for my healing. I'm praising God for my breakthrough. I'm praising God, hallelujah, that whatever, hallelujah, man has said, I'm, I'm waiting on God's time, and I'm being patient because I know God is at work. See, patience with family is love patience with others is respect and, and and patience with yourself is confidence but patience with god is faith you have to have that faith faith is nothing more than complete trust and reliance on god on god and his word the holy spirit and all that he has given to you today i pray hallelujah that you understand what patience really mean that God is working something out for you and it's going to be great and he promised and let me tell you something God does not lie he has to perform his word praise God this morning I pray that the word has been a blessing to you hallelujah and as they come back and pray I pray that that, that patience praise God it increase in you hallelujah because God has something great for you in your life.